WMC Memphis, WMFS HD2 Bartlett, Memphis. Part of the Memphis Sports Network with 929 FM ESPN. ESPN 790 AM. The views and opinions of the hosts or guests of the following program do not necessarily reflect those of the management or staff of Intercom Memphis. Sunrise, new day's dawning, and it's calling you and me. Where the mighty Mississippi flows by Memphis, Tennessee. We've got good lands, fields, and water. Hey, there is no better way. You can find. Saturday morning, welcome to another edition of the award-winning Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790, brought to you proudly by the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, Gaston's White River Resort, and Barton Power Sports. Now, here's your host, Larry Ray. Hey, good Saturday morning. Welcome to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790, and this is Fifth Saturday which means that... Uh, Yippee! Yeah, there's one of the yippees we have. And there's the other one. Uh, no, this means that Gene Smith, this is Bonus Smith. Bonus Smith. Back to back, because he'll be with us next Saturday if we celebrate our 15th anniversary. And you believe that? I cannot believe that. Gene Smith, our hunter education guru, and, of course, Charlie Covington. Uh, the only we got the only radio show that had its own poet laureate who will be giving at least one poem later in the show that he has written, and he has another one ready to go. But uh, good morning to you, Charlie, good too. Good morning to you, Larry. And it's good to see you. And then, of course, uh, we, we always have our enforcer in the studio, uh, and that's that's Guy Trebo over there, of course, from LROutdoors.com. And we got some big doings for next week's uh, uh, anniversary show that Guy will tell us about. Of course, Greg Ratliff is our show producer Keeping everything running. And I think one of the guys here said, we got some diversity in today's show. Yeah, that was Charlie. Yeah, it was Charlie. That was me. Uh, I've been fascinated by uh, the, the products that come out. And so I know that in the Mid-South, ticks are a major problem. Yes, they are. And this year's been really bad uh, for ticks. I've uh, gotten at least two off of me. And we're closing in on dove season when I know I'm going to get oh, some more. Yeah. That's when they'll come out on September the 1st. But... We've got a gentleman on with us this morning that uh, when I got the information about it, uh, he's come out with a product called Riditic, which I love. I, you know, I'm a name person. Oh, I like that name. And it's a great yeah. name. And I also studied a little bit more about him. He's, uh, we could spend about three segments on it uh, today's show if we had time. But that's Mel Jacobson out of uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, uh, right now out of Minnesota. Minna, what's the name of your town? Well, we're in Minnetonka, but we're right at the, the land of 10,000 lakes. So oh, uh, you're wow. just going to have to be a little bit jealous this morning. Yes, oh, yes. Well, really jealous. I'm really jealous of the guy that counted all the lakes. You know, I mean, <laughs> we, I, we've got more than 10,000. And I, 26 billion ticks. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. Well, well, Mel, you're the man with Red a Tick. And, uh, and I know uh, you and your son, your late son, Mark. Uh, and really, Mel is is in. Uh, if you Google Mel Jacobson, you will find out that this man knows a lot about pottery. But at the that, same time, uh, in his uh, in his lifetime, has spent a lot of time outdoors. Loves the outdoors. Retired teacher, uh, things along this line. But uh, Riditic is something that you and your son talked about. You went to uh, duct tape is where it all started. Uh, tell us a little about Riditic. Well, Larry, we uh, we have raised golden retrievers. Uh, we've had seven of them. And, of course, when you live in, we have our farm in Wisconsin, and when you go up hunting and when you're out there in the summertime, 
the dogs would come back loaded with ticks. Mm-hmm. And you get those great big white ones that are like ear of corn, you know. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and your wife screams and the neighbors scream. And, and so my son figured out a way to make a little cup out of, of duct tape, and he would put it around the tick. And lo and behold, about 25 minutes, half hour later, that piece of duct tape would be lying on the floor with the tick inside. And he found out that what we discovered was that when you cover a tick, they breathe through their butts. Yes, and right. We yeah. put the tape over the butt and it killed the tick and it fell off. So we How could about? find it, throw it in the garbage. And that led us to the idea that maybe we could come up with a product that used a really high quality tape. And if you put the tape on the tick, particularly if you're in a, a blind and you're out uh, hunting, <clears throat> particularly in Tennessee, you're hunting those uh, great big turkeys. Yeah, oh and, yeah. And you feel that thing on you and you can't move. So you put a little piece of tape on the tick. When you get home at night, you just take the tape tape off and there's a dead tick. So Amazing. And, and so it, it's all come down to the fact that we're using a real high-quality 3M surgical tape. Uh, you put the patch on the tick. Even if it's, you know, 20 hours later, you can kill the tick. And it takes about 30 hours for the Lyme disease <clears throat> pathogens to move into your body. So if you can get that tick off... Um, you probably won't get Lyme disease. But the best thing is you've got the tick encapsulated. Yeah. If you're frightened out of your mind, uh, and arachnophobia is number one phobia <laughs> in the world, um, <clears throat> all you have to do is fold it and throw it in the garbage. But if you're really concerned, you can take it to a doctor or a friend and say, is this, is this a black-legged tick? Is this Lyme disease? And they'll say, no, that's a standard tick. Don't worry about it. Throw it away. And... Um, so we really have kind of worked a lot of things into one one little product. And the bonus of this product, Larry, yeah. is that when you, let's say your, your, your grandson goes to diversity camp, and there's a whole bunch of kids that just came in from different places, and they've got ticks on them, and your kid says, oh, I'm not worried about ticks, and he scrapes that tick off with his fingernail, he's got a drop of blood on his finger. Yes. And this product, when you put the, the, the little tape on there, uh, you don't pass blood from kid to kid or family to family. So it's, um, it's a secondary bonus. Well, we're talking to Mel Jacobson uh, about the, the red tick here on Outdoors with Larry Ray on this Saturday morning, the uh, final Saturday, July 30th of uh, 2016, uh, kicking it off with Mel. And, Mel, I know this this has been a long process, if I'm not mistaken. You patented first in 2008? Yes. And uh, like we say, it's like pushing a coal car, you know, up a railroad track. And But we're finally getting a lot of people to pay attention to it from its health benefits. And, and with the tremendous amount of Lyme disease, people are dying of it. There's new varieties and 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 we think that um, it's a product that is actually going to help save some lives. Um, w- w- my son died, and I decided to finish every project he began with. He went to the University of Wisconsin Stout, mm-hmm. and he was a design major. And he, so he had ideas about this product. And when he died, I said, well, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. And um, And it's kind of in his memory, and what we think if we could save a few lives... Uh, we know that scissors and pulling ticks off just doesn't work because yeah. the head stays in. Yeah. And so we have a system that is foolproof. It's made with a 3M product. So everybody says, well, we, we, hey, that's going to be okay. It's made by 3M. It's their finest surgical tape. And so, you know, you kind of take the fear out of it. That's what we're doing, Larry. And I know uh, you mentioned your late son, Mark, in this. Yep. And you have uh, and you mentioned in his memory and the dedication You've taken a step forward, had you uh, passed that, had you mail in uh, in your foundation? Yes, and that's all going to happen as soon as we start to make money. <laughs> but of course, we have to sell thousands of them. Yeah, and and at some point we'll see it in Walgreens and and uh, other places. But uh, the Sportsman's Guide is selling it now. The Sportsman's Warehouse is selling it. Yes. Um, we're getting you know a variety of people now who say, "Hmm, this might be all right." So well, it's just a it's a wonderful thing, and I know that. Uh, uh, and you, we talked off the air. I'm I'm middle aged for a 146 year old man. Yeah, uh, Mel is uh, 81. Doesn't sound near as old as it used to to me, Mel. 
No, no. And if and if you go to really good doctors here at the Mayo, they kind of take care of me pretty well. And uh, they they're saying now that I'm only sixty years old. So oh, you've could, you've you've uh, unaged then, so to speak. Yeah, I, yes, I'm doing that. And I, I wish we could get a whole lot of time because I tell you about uh, prostate cancer that was cured by freezing off the tumor and. And some brand new things that I'm doing so my grandsons don't have to go through it. Wow. And, and I'm doing some experimental surgery. I had my heart fixed. But it's, it's such good news to people that you don't have to be old. And you've got to keep moving. You've got to keep still doing stuff. And, Amen, buddy. And, that's, and, uh, and I think that's the, the answer to everything. And the outdoors is still the, the best answer there is. Well, a man that deals with pottery... And I and I've got to touch on that for a, a, just a second here, Mel, because that that is your that's your passion. Uh, I know uh, a retired school teacher, thirty four years or so, uh, teaching school and things along that line. But uh, the pottery aspect is, I, I don't know how you have time to do what you're doing. At uh, well, you know, you stay well, busy. I, I have no time to waste. And but you see, Larry, you and I are almost identical because I write in the field of my profession. I know you do. Yeah. And so I've written three books, and and I'm trying to make a difference. I, I write about the ceramic kills and and trying to drag people into the 21st century. Even though I'm older, <laughs> I, I I believe in the 21st century. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people are doing things still in Tennessee that they did back in 1850, and they think that's the way you're supposed to do things. No, no. And some of the great potteries of all time are right right near you. (laughs) They they are, and I know that uh, you're going to Taiwan in, in the fall, right? Well, there's a there's a wonderful show of a hundred potters that make uh, Japanese tea bowls. I trained in Japan and I did a ten thousand pot study in one year. It was like going ten thousand pot study in one year. Ten thousand, and uh, but if you work a ten hour day, Larry, and you make about twenty pots an hour, and you work six days a week, it doesn't take long to make ten thousand. And uh, but oh. I did a full apprenticeship and and. Well, it was it, very important to me to to learn how to do the profession properly, and that's I, what everything was about. I've got to hook you up with my good friend uh, Dale Sanders down here in Memphis. He's eighty three. He paddled the uh, entire Mississippi River last year. Uh, no, he's eighty. Just turned eighty on the Mississippi River. Oh, how wonderful! And he is. Uh, he was in your pretty close to your location up there. And this is a gentleman that uh, refuses to. Uh, Sit on the couch and uh, and use the remote. And uh, Mel, it's uh, been great to have you on the show this morning. Again, well, I couldn't folks, be happier. Uh, that's that's Rita Tick. And and how can they get information about this product? Just go to ridatick dot com or go to me melpots dot com. And those are two real easy things. And you can even call me on the phone if you have questions. And so we'll we're, post we're this. We're welcome to take them. Yeah, we'll have all this on my website lroutdoors dot com. How to get in touch with this Rita Tick with Mel Jacobson. Thanks, Mel. Have a great day, and uh, we'll stay in touch, buddy, okay? Okay, Larry. Good to talk to you. Thank Bye-bye. you. All right. All right, let's take a break, and we're going from from Minnesota to St. Charles, Missouri. Oh, this show is moving on. Yes, we are. Anytime y'all want to breathe, you can, or say something, you know. <laughs> just take a deep breath and say, Mel, are you really? that? Did that guy not start fired up? I'm telling you. Is that not great for an 83, 81, whatever he was? Just when you think everything's been invented, somebody comes up. We couldn't get into his health things he was doing there. All right, we'll be right back on Outdoors with Larry Ray. You can find 